Good afternoon, beloved brothers and sisters in Yeshua Jesus. This is Linda Rose, Spirit Song. I'm going to be sharing with you today my final week of my top five recommended videos. Can you handle the truth and bonus videos? This is week 26. The reason why this is going to be my final week is because now that I have a community page, I will be sharing whatever videos the Father puts on my heart each day. So for those of you who want to be on top of that and see any of these recommended videos, I would encourage you to click on the bell for those who have subscribed to my main and backup channel. Click the bell and uh, personalize the notification so that you can start receiving uh, not only, of course, the videos that I, that I post, but also uh, what I put up on the community page. And check your, and if you're not receiving these notifications, I would encourage you just to go every day and check your subscriptions and see what pops up um, for anything new that uh, that you can be updated with. Before I get into all that, I want to share with you, um, I titled this, Jesus Had Compassion. My daughter and I, we were reading in Mark, um, I think we were reading out of Mark 8, and it really just stuck out Something really stuck out at me, and I wanted to, to read to you, not just from Mark 8, but from Mark 6, and, and, and several other scriptures that have to do with Jesus having compassion, and also some scriptures to which we need to follow his example, and also have compassion. I'm going to go ahead and start in Mark 6, 16 through 46. I know that's quite a bit of reading, but there's a few things here, a couple of things where we see his compassion um, with the crowds. So let's go ahead and start there. And now King Herod heard of him, for his name had become well known. And he said, John the Baptist is risen from the dead. And therefore, these powers are at work in him. This is referring to Jesus. He thought that Jesus was John the Baptist risen from the dead. Others said it is Elijah. And others said it is the prophet. Or like one of the prophets. But when Herod heard, he said, This is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised from the dead. For Herod hurt himself had sent and laid hold of John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For he had married her, because John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Now, I don't want to get into all this, what happened, but of course we know that uh, Herodias, she had her daughter uh, dance for, do some kind of dance for the for Herod, and, and he was very, very pleased and asked her, you know, if... Um, you know, he would give her up to half his kingdom, what she wanted. And of course, she asked her mom, and her mom said, please give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And he was very grieved by that, but you know, they keep their oaths. They take their oaths very seriously. Something many of us don't understand, but that's that's the tradition, and that's scriptural as well. Even though he was not, uh, he was not really a true, um, as far as the position didn't belong to him, but he, he still honored the oath for the sake of the people and his nobles. He had to keep that. So um, we'll go on and we'll pick up from there. But what I thought was interesting is that why, I'm gonna point this out because I talked to my daughter about this. Forgive some of the traffic going by. Why would Herod insist that Jesus uh, was John the Baptist risen from the dead? I surmise 
in his insistence is that John the Baptist, since he was the cousin to Yeshua, they probably looked a lot alike. They probably resembled each other to where he looked pretty close to uh, what John the Baptist looked like. They really resembled each other. That's just my own my own speculation, but I think it's interesting because he insisted on that, even though others said it was really, it wasn't really John the Baptist, it was a prophet or Elisha. Just something to think about. So immediately, um, and not immediately, let's go here and it says, so of course, and the king was exceedingly sorry, yet because of, of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to, to refuse her. So of course he had this, this take place and it said that when his disciples heard of it, they came and took away his corpse and laid it in a tomb. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. So you can see this is what he wanted to do. He wanted to take his disciples and go to a place, a deserted place where there wouldn't be anybody so that he can grieve the loss of his cousin. For there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities, they arrived before them and came together to him. So you can imagine <laughs> all these people running from all over the place to meet Yeshua in the desert, the, these, the, the stir, deserted place that he planned on going to. They were so um, full of zeal that they beat them there on foot. But the multitudes saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him, said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they, uh, they said five and two fish. He commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples and set, that be set them before him. And the two fish he divided among them so that they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments of the fish and of those who had eaten of the loaves were about 5,000 men. So we see this first account of him feeding. So not only did he have compassion on the crowds and he knew that they were like a, they were like a sheep in need of, of a shepherd, but he did not send them away hungry. So his compassion exceeded that of ministering to them, pouring out healing when he wanted to grieve and he had to set that aside because he had compassion on the crowds and went beyond that, like I said, and fed them as well. So there's that one account. And we're going to jump now to Mark 8, 1 through 10. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and, has said, and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. 
And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way. For some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? Now, mind you, we just read in chapter 6 that he did this with the 5,000. This is another account, and you'll find out when you, when you, when you see how many baskets they, uh, they came up with and how many they fed as opposed to the 5,000. And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. So he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke them, gave them to his disciples to set before them, and they set them before the multitudes. They also had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets. So the the 5,000 that were fed were 12 baskets, and here we have seven baskets. And we will not go into depth as to the 12 and the 7 and the amazing uh, uh, meanings to that. That's not what this reading is about. Um, so they, they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away, immediately got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dal, Dalmanutha. Now, the first account was Bethsaida. That's where they went. Here was Dalmanutha. So these were two separate occasions where he had, comp you can see he had compassion on the crowds. This should give you encouragement to those of you who wonder, how is the Lord? How is our Yeshu Messiah? How is he going to take care of us when all the stuff we see going around us is, is, is to the point where we may lose our jobs? If we don't comply with this, what they're mandating to be a part of this B system, how are we going to take care of our families? And the list goes on and on and on. Now, do you think that his compassion was is limited? If his compassion was for, for the crowds that flocked to him, how much more will he take care of us? who continue to cling to him and put our trust in him and our hope in him. His compassion is not limited. His compassion is there for those of us who love him, seek him with all of our heart and are poor in spirit and know that only he can supply and provide what we need, not only for us, but for our households. So keep that in mind, those of you who are struggling and wondering, how, how is this going to be? How is it possible? Well, it was pretty impossible. Was how are you going to feed 5,000 men, not including women and children, on the first account? And how are you going to feed 4,000 men, not including women and children, in the wilderness with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish? How? If he was able to do that for them, how much more will he be able to do for us? So let me go ahead and read in Luke 7, 11 through 15. Now what happened the day after that, he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. We're going to go ahead after we do this, before we go into following his example, I will get into what the definition of compassion is. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Now, what's interesting about this is he had compassion because he saw that she was widowed. Who was, she, who, who was taking care of her? 
I'm sure this young man was helping to provide and take care of his, his widowed mother. So think about that. So not only in that compassion, he knew how it would be for her not having her son. A lot of times we don't understand the underpinnings of the story until you really contemplate it and really think about it. We're going to go to Luke 19, 41 to 44. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this day, your day, the things that made for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. He knew what was going to come of them. Of course, we know what happened in 70 AD. This is what he was referring to. This was the judgment he was talking about. But he wept. He was filled with compassion. This is not something that he wanted to happen, but they continued to reject him. They did not know the time of their visitation. And because of that, they came under great judgment. Even though Yeshua agreed with the Father that this is what he would do, but there is a price to pay. And these ones who were a big part in sending him to the cross, he said this is what will happen to them. It was prophesied, not just here, but in other scriptures you will find things that he was talking about had to do with this judgment that was going to come upon them at a future day if they did not repent. But he wept. He had compassion, even though he knew this judgment was going to take place. Let's go to um, Isaiah 40, 11. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. This is re referring to our Yeshua. This is how he feels about us. We are his lambs. We are the ones that he cares about. He shepherds his flock. His sheep hear his voice. He gathers us in his arms and carries us in his bosom and leads those of us who have young as well. So he's going to take care of your children, not just you, but your children, those you are responsible for. Let's read Hebrews 2, 17 and 4, 15. Okay. All right, I'm going to start. Um, so. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to Elohim to make propitiation for the sins of his people. For in that day he himself had suffered, being tempted. He, he is able to aid those who are tempted. He is able to aid and have compassion and help those of us who are struggling because he knew that struggle coming upon this earth and did not take equality with God in his glory, but he became as in likeness as a man. So he knew he can show mercy. He can be that faithful high priest. He can aid us in our suffering and the things that we are struggling and being tempted by. He shows us compassion continually. That compassion has not stopped. It's with us, ever with us, for those who belong to him. Hebrews 4.15 
Let's see what we're at here. Let me go ahead and start in verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of Elohim, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, and yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So you can see that he sympathized. Sympathize means to have compassion. Compassion with our weaknesses, beloved. And all points tempted as we are, and yet without sin. So we can come before him. We can come before his throne of grace to receive that power and the favor that we need in order to be able to receive his mercy that we don't deserve and give us the grace, which is that help, the power that is needed. That grace is there that helps us in time of need. It gives us the power to go through and to overcome those situations and have the strength that we need to endure. He provides that grace to stand firm and that when we've done all to stand, we can stand, therefore, with that grace that he's given us that can keep us standing and not fainting and not being weary in well-doing. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. After I read this scripture, we will, we will go ahead and look into the word compassion. Okay, here we go. Come to me, all you who are, you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he wants to show his compassion. He wants you to experience his love and compassion for you as he entreats you to come to him with all the things that weigh you down, with all the things that burden you and trouble you and cause you great distress. He says, come, I will give you rest. That's a promise. We know this scripture, but do we really, really know it? Do we apply it? Do we take him on this offer of compassion? that he is calling us to give us that rest, even in, when in times of great distress and heavy burdens and the yoke and those things that are pressing us down and keeping us from going forward in him. That when we learn from him, when he says, take my yoke, that means we yoke ourselves to him. When we stay connected to him, then he's going to help carry us. That's why it's going to be easy and light because he's going to carry the bulk of it for us. If we lay it down before him and we yoke ourselves to him, who's strong enough to carry each and every one of us in our difficulties, in these areas of great distress, hardship, and suffering. And remember that. Let's go ahead and Get the definition for, um, I'm going to read it out of the Noah Webster. Let's do that, okay? Scroll down here. And let's go ahead and put in a compassion. Compassion is a suffering with another, painful sympathy, a sensation of sorrow excited by the distress or misfortunes of another, pity. So it's pity mixed with passion. Com it's uh, uh, compounded of love and sorrow. So it's love and sorrow. 
okay? Compassion mixed with passion. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's see. Compassion also means to have pity on, to show that kind of pity, and being filled with that pain and the sorrow that other people are feeling and reaching out to them with love, with passion to those who are in distress, to those who are filled with sorrow, to show that kind of empathy for those who are in pain, depending on whatever the situation is. He has compassion, beloved. His compassion has not ceased. No matter what situation or circumstances we find ourselves in, his compassion is always available to us. He's just telling us to come, not just come once. Some of us need to come daily because we really are struggling. We need to come daily and yoke ourselves to him and allow him to carry us through these difficulties and trust him to take care of us. That as we seek him and we draw near to him, his kingdom, his way, his right way of doing things and yoke ourselves to him he knows what we need. He knows what you need. He will provide it. Trust him. Come to him and trust him. Let me read these scriptures on following his example. Just as he shows compassion for us, we need to do the same. We need to show compassion for others. We need to show that kind of mercy, empathy for those who are in sorrow, who are in pain in distress, and for the misfortunes of, of others, to show that kind of pity mixed with passion, that love mixed with sorrow and attending to those who have this pain, okay? And who are in this extreme distress. So let's, uh, let me go to Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So that's following him. That's being a, taking part. It says that we are partakers of his divine nature. And part of that nature is compassion. Following him and the compassion that he has. Can you imagine how would we feel if we're trying to grieve a loss and then there's people that are vying for us and need our time and our attention. I'm not saying we shouldn't go off and have those times of grieving, but there may be times, especially with what we're coming into, we're going to need to think about this. There are going to be those who are going to need ministry in a deeper way than what we can understand and comprehend right now. And we need to be able to show the compassion that he showed because we have him in us when they need it and put ourselves aside. We need to follow his example. He said, follow me, follow him. I just read to you how he had compassion. We need to follow him and show compassion among other things, but this is what we're dealing with right now. First Corinthians 11, one. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. So Paul is saying, imitate me, because he followed, and you know Paul. You know the compassion and what he's in his life and what he's had to endure. So he followed Christ's example. So when we follow his example, we want to encourage others to follow ours, especially if we're following his. Okay. So that's what Paul said. He got to that place where he can actually say, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. We need to be imitators of Yeshua in this area of compassion because many of us are lacking it. Hebrews 12, 3. 
Actually, yes, Hebrews 12, 3. Let's go ahead and start, start in verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So what are we doing now? We are looking unto Jesus. There are those who are watching us. Not only just a great cloud of witnesses, but all those around us are watching us. So what do we need to do? Throw off those things which are snares in our life. Those besetting sins that are keeping us from being a witness unto him and being able to reach out in compassion to others because we're so busy filled with guilt and shame because of the things that we are not allowing him to help us overcome by his grace. Looking unto Jesus, our Yeshua Messiah, who is the very author and finisher and completer of our faith. If you look to him and call upon him, he will give you what you need to carry it out. So look to him. See his example, his compassion, and do likewise. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Okay, we're going to have another vehicle going by here. Forgive that. 1 and 2. It's one of those loud ones. <laughs> Okay. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet smelling aroma. So when we follow our Yeshua, we follow his example of compassion and mercy and other things that we need in, in his love, his mercy and his love are all mixed in with that compassion, showing that pity for those who have misfortune, to those who are suffering and experiencing extreme distress. These are the things we need to follow. We need to imitate. Walking in love showing compassion, showing his kindness, speaking a gentle word even to those that would be aggressive towards you because it says a gentle word turns away wrath. So instead of being heated right, right along with us, have compassion. I love what our sister Crystal said, if you got to hear that. Um, the live stream that I had her on as a special guest. She said she's learned, and she's learned a lot of this from her mom, that even those who are very aggressive, very angry toward her, immediately, she said, she thinks about there's something, there's something in their life that is causing them to react in this way. And when she comes to that place of realizing that they're not doing it because they're literally wanting to hurt her, but because there's something going on that has caused this kind of uh, reaction, then she's able to have compassion on them. And this is what we need to do. We need to realize that if any, even the, those who are unlovable, whatever it is that you're experiencing, those who may not understand and they're afraid, so they're, they're thinking because you're not going along with what they're doing because they think they're doing the right thing, they're going to attack you and tear you apart. There is a way that we can show compassion, even to those who have this attitude. And when they see that, that gentle word and not retaliating and walking in his love, it's going to diffuse that kind of tension, that kind of hatred, that kind of fear and anxiety that they're experiencing that they, that is being projected onto them because they are they're 
surrounded by these lies and strong, strong delusions that they are exposed to day in and day out because they lack a, a relationship with him and those who may have it, they only have it in word only but not in their action and their daily lives. Because if they did, they wouldn't be afraid. Let me read one more, John 3, John 13, 13 through 16. And that I will go ahead and get into my top five. This is all spontaneous, beloved. I did not take any notes. This is just something he put on my heart from a reading from my daughter and I we did, and he just led me down this, this path. And it's just unfolding as I'm doing this with you all right now. John 13, 13, uh, let's see where we're at here. Okay. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you. If you do them. So he was an example of a servant and washing their feet. That was very humbling for them. He had compassion. He knew, he knew what they were going to go through. He knew when he was, when, when it was time for him to go, he said, I must go so that I can send you a comforter. He knew the kind of life they were to, going to experience, even though they were going to have that baptism of the Holy Spirit, they were going to experience a lot of the opposition, persecution and suffering as did our Messiah. And so do we, but even in the midst of all of that, we need to show compassion. We need to serve and love, despite how other people treat us as Yeshua did. And it was exampled to us before the crowds. Can you imagine every day, nonstop people bringing someone who needed to be healed? That can be, that can take a lot out of you. In fact, there were times we know, we, as we read in Scripture, that he's gone when he's ministered to the crowds. And that's why he had to get on the boat, too. It had something to do with sound, but it also had to do with those crowding around him. He needed to put that little distance so that he can actually teach and not constantly do the healing. There needed to be that balance. But he was always healing, always pouring out, to the point that there were times that in order for him to be filled up, in order for him to have that time with the Father, he would do that in the middle of the night, throughout the night. And we know that at times when he's, when they were in the boat trying to get to the other side and he's walking on the water. And it was an hour that was in the middle of the night. <laughs> so... If we do the things that he tells us to do, we show this compassion, even when it seems like we're spent at times, he will fill us up. He will lead us to those times when we can be filled up. Yes, he may get you up two, three o'clock in the morning. Take that time, spend time with him, pray and get filled up because you don't know what kind of day you're going to have. We need to be living that kind of life as Yeshua example to us that he didn't do anything outside of his father's will. And we need to do the same, showing compassion, being available and ready to love one another, the brothers and sisters in Christ deeply from the heart, to love our neighbors, our enemies, to pray for those who are persecuting us, to pray for salvation, for those who are lost to come into the kingdom. We need to be prepared and we need to follow Yeshua's example. So now we're going to switch gears and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording and uh, do my top five with the video.
Okay, now let's go on with my final week of my top five videos. Can you handle the truth? And bonus videos. I do want to let you all know that what I'm going to do is when I put videos out, I'm just going to be putting out um, like um, Salvation, The Greatest Gift, the link to that, special music that songs you can find to worship our Abba Father with, um, Jimmy Vision with uh, who hosts the Doctrine of Christ series, um, part one and two of the mark of the the mark and the precursor and the precursor by Anthony and uh, Kathleen Patch and then of course the Father Heart of God playlist the live interactive live stream parts one through seven they're going to be up in the description I'll make sure I mention that when I do videos to make sure you check in the description below for these links that will be posted on a regular basis. Any other videos I'm going to be putting on my community page. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Just a little heads up before I get started. This is week 26. The first top video is the woman at the well and to walk on water. These are two songs by Liz Hadassah Wild and our sister Ramona Coyne. Thank you, Ramona, for sending me the links to these two songs. They are so beautiful and they're very anointed. The second top five video is Challenges and Faith by Jer Bear Grizzly. This was sent to me by Rhonda Libby. It's more confirmation to what her and I have been talking about of late. The third top five video is God's Word, Jesus Christ, Return, Owe Nothing to Anyone Except Your Obligation to Love One Another by All Glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Dan, for sending me this link from this beautiful and precious sister in Christ. That's Dan Riker, Esoteric Remnant, sent me that link. Number four, top five, this is number four, Hidden Code in Genesis 1-1. I also put this up in the community page, but I wanted to put it up here as well. This is over the top awesome. Thank you, Allison, for sending me this link. It really connects more dots to the Bible study you, Rhonda, and myself did in Genesis 1, 1 through 5, which was mind-blowing and incredibly profound in itself. The fifth and the last top five recommended video is A Famine by Watchman Jerry Tony. Another powerful, another... Um, let me just read this to you. Let me read the scripture. This is what I got after I watched it. 2 Timothy 4, 3. The Berean literal Bible says, For there will be a time when they will not endure sound teaching, but according to their own desires, having an itching ear, they will gather around them teachers to suit themselves. Let me just fix this so I can... Uh, And a scripture that he gave that I wanted to read, that he referenced, I, want, I put that up here. It's Titus 2, 11 to 15. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to everyone. It instructs us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live sensible, upright, and godly lives in the present age as we wait the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession. Zealous for good deeds, speak these things as you encourage and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. 
you need to watch that video. Not only watch it, but take it to heart and bring these to the Father in prayer. Not too many people are, are pre preaching uh, these, these truths, these hard-hitting truths that we need to hear. So I would encourage you to listen to that video. Now I'm going to share with you, Can You Handle the Truth? And it's these two videos that are going to be on, that are going to remain in the description for any future videos. And that's part one, The Mark or a Precursor. Um, that's by Anthony Patch, and it was put up on Miss Maskless Bit Shoot page. I like that one. And part two is Precursor by Anthony and Kathleen Patch. Very, very, uh, all I can say is you really need to watch them. After watching them, they're, those two, as I said, are going to be my staple videos because they also expose some truthers out there who are telling you that, you know, just watch it. I, I, I don't need to say any more. And of course, the bonus videos are the personalized. I have, oh, so these bonus videos I'm putting up for this particular, this last week of doing my top five is Personalized Scripture Promises, Part One by Linda Rose, Spirit Song. And A Prayer, My Personalized Scripture Promises, Part Two. And A Word of God Speak, by mercy me. I will be posting from time to time along with my top five or not top five but the ones that, that I get that I, I am led by the Holy Spirit to put out there on the community page some of these um, teachings and um, studies that the Father gave me uh, that many of you may not have uh, got a chance to to see, watch, and hear. So I'm going to be putting them out as well from time to time. And of course, Salvation, the Greatest Gift. I have the link that you can share, customize, and do as the Spirit leads to share with friends, family, neighbors. So I have that up and have the link to the special music. Um, and then Jimmy Vision, the Doctrine of Christ series. And then the Father Heart of God Interactive Livestream Study Series, Part 1 through 7. Uh, it's a very powerful and life-changing interactive reading and study from the Father Heart of God book by Floyd McClung. I would encourage those who want to check this out to, to purchase the book, but you don't need it to take part in these interactive live streams because we've been doing the reading from the books that we, we ourselves had. But it would be good for you to have for yourself, for your own personal study. And maybe even do a group Bible study using using this. So that pretty much concludes my top five recommended videos, Can You Handle the Truth, and bonus videos. As I had mentioned to you um, before, this is going to be the last one that I do like this. So keep an eye out for videos that I put out on the community page and click the bell so you can get personalized notifications for the, for the main channel and the backup channel. So I want you all to know that I love you. I am praying for you. Our Abba Father loves you so much. His Son loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his Son for each and every one of us. And Yeshua loves us for agreeing with the Father and coming and dying in our place, taking our sins upon him. Even while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's how much he loves us. So because he first loved us, we need to love him. Love him with everything you have, beloved. Every opportunity you get, show your love for him by drawing closer and nearer to him and turning away from the things of this world because this world is going to pass away rather quickly. It's very temporary. So press into him who is eternal and let go of those things that are temporal. Until we come together again, beloved, I bid you all shalom.
Psalms 103, verses 13, 14, and 17. His children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him, for He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust, but from everlasting to everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him. Children's children. 